Hi! Want to make an area look like this? It's too easy. As long as you can count to three, you won't struggle at all. I mean it. Ready? Let's go. Ready to count with me? One, two, three. Okay, doing good so far. Now let's count back from three. Three, two, one. Hooray! Now let's count from one to three, and then from three back again to one. So, one, two, three, two, one. Wonderful. Okay, okay. Now let's mix things up a bit. Let's repeat the number two a few times. Because I don't know. Alright, I'll stop being condescending now. Can you tell what I'm doing though? These curves I'm making have a clear pattern to them, where I'm just counting up and down. Let's connect all of this up, making a weird shape in the process. Kinda looks like a duck or something. Let's make it into a pond. Let's clear these blocks out. Good. Now, we'll make the pond go deeper. You don't even need to count for this, just watch carefully. You can see I'm removing blocks but leaving these ones here. Just note, I am taking out the blocks on the corners. We just need to clear this layer out as shown. There we are. I do want to go down more though. Let's remove another layer. On this layer I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm leaving the corner blocks instead of taking them out. So now we take out all of this layer doing just that. Nice, but I think we can go down further. On the next layer down mark all of the corners that poke inward with some kind of block. Doing this makes it way easier. I'm using polished andesite. We're just leaving a row of stone on the inner faces of these blocks, so we just mark out every corner with a block. and then remove all of the blocks within. Think we can go any deeper? Of course we can. On this level we mark each inner corner with two blocks. And clear out all of the inner blocks the same way. So, each layer we go down, we can keep bringing the inner edges in more and more. By using that pattern, we can make curves in the game that look naturally generated without just winging it. And it doesn't just work for carving out terrain, either. But more on that later. Seriously though, you can build just about anything that you could ever imagine using this technique. I use it for everything, from floating islands to terrace farms. The next step is to pretty this up. I'm going to place gravel around the inner edges, like so. Then andesite, then cobblestone, then tuff, and finally some deep slate at the bottom. Just to break the gradient up a little bit, I'm going to throw in some blocks from each previous layer going down. So gravel where the andesite is, andesite where the cobble is, cobble where the tough is, so on and so forth. We can add more gravel around the lake, and you can see I'm counting out another two blocks from the corner and filling in the gaps. Now it's time for the water. It's best to fill from the bottom and work your way up. This pond is lacking life. 
let's get some green in there. Lily pads on their own are a bit boring now that we have drip leaves. Did you know that real life lilies have a root system? The drip leaf fronds make nice roots underneath lilies, and the leaf can actually touch the lily pads. Even better than that, you can even use coral fans to mimic flowers if placed on top of waterlogged slabs. We need some marginal vegetation, and the small drip leaf is so nice. Now for a boat jetty. Comes with boat. And now, tree. I'm making a willow tree here, and look! There's that number pattern. You can use it everywhere. I have a distinct way of placing leaves on trees that have wide canopies as well. I go to the tips of the branches, make a 5x5 five five square around the tip, punch the corners out, then do a 3x3 three three on top. It's easy, and I do that at the tip of every branch. It isn't a weeping willow without some hanging leaves, so I've gone underneath and placed some more leaves. There's some birch leaves in there too. Bushes, you can hide torches in them. If you cover them up enough, they become hardly noticeable. I'm even bone mealing the bottom of the pond and placing kelp here and there to add variety. I don't want any more coral in there. Too much colour for this pond in my opinion. I think that's the pond about finished. And this spruce tree is one that I've shown how to make on my channel. Check the video out if you'd like to, the link's in the description. There's normally bare exposed soil underneath trees in real life, so I've put some rooted dirt and some coarse dirt underneath the trees. And also some flowers to add a bit of colour. To give the place a bit of a country cottage sort of feel, I also added this wagon. This is a cool trick you might not know, but if you place two blocks next to an oak sapling, it will be forced to grow into a tall tree. The only problem is, sometimes they grow into these weird trees that you find in jungles. You also need a lot of bone meal, sometimes more than a stack per tree. There's another one of those weird trees, gotta take it down. It's always a bit of a gamble whatever you're going to get. I like to do this with birch trees. Place a few blocks of dirt and bone meal a sapling on top. Then replace the dirt with logs afterwards to make those tall birch trees. Easy! That number pattern can also be used to make paths, like this. This works for roads, walls, all sorts of different things, whatever has a curve. And even landforms, like this. But I'm not going to fill this one in because I don't have time. To finish, I just bone mealed the ground to make things look a little more natural and threw in some extra relatively small tweaks in places. Voila! I really hope you found this tutorial useful and that the pattern I shared with you makes sense. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button as it really helps my channel to grow. Likes and comments are also greatly appreciated, so don't be shy. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers and bye bye.